how how devastating are those images, Foreign Minister, the return of the Taliban for the hopes, the freedoms, the lives of women in Afghanistan? Kieran, good afternoon, and this is a, a very difficult day, a difficult day for many, but uh, for no one more than the uh, people of Afghanistan, as you say. Uh, it has been a very long and uh, and difficult uh, struggle over so many years, and uh, I know that Australians as well have given an enormous amount uh, in those many years. We know that 41 Australians... Uh, made the ultimate sacrifice, and I've, I, I'm thinking of their families today. I'm thinking for those who were wounded, all of those who served, uh, mm. many of us who have friends who served as we watch this uh, extremely disturbing and distressing uh, circumstances. And, and obviously for the, the women of Afghanistan as well, we all know the atrocities that life was like uh, under the Taliban, now we see these images of the Taliban back in control and those hard-fought freedoms, at least in the capital cities, they're gone. For women and girls, uh, I fear this is devastating and uh, we have indeed seen in recent weeks as the Taliban uh, has uh, completed its uh, surge towards Kabul uh, where that has uh, has been the case. And we have worked so hard uh, with the people of Afghanistan, with the women of Afghanistan and with international partners, uh, uh, both governments and humanitarian and non-government organisations uh, to, to make those changes, to see women represented in in elected office, to see girls able to attend school and women uh, able to teach, uh, to address questions of family and domestic violence, maternal mortality, uh, all of those things that we have done. Uh, there is now, uh, I think, an enormous uh, weight of expectation on the international community uh, on those issues in how they approach engagement uh, with the Taliban, and that includes Australia, uh, how they approach, approach engagement uh, with uh, whatever form of government uh, we end up uh, with in Afghanistan uh, in the coming days and weeks uh, to really ensure that that focus is not diminished, but it will be extraordinarily difficult, uh, and uh, we absolutely know that. Mm. It does So in that context, does the federal government intend on recognising Taliban, the Taliban as the, Afghan, the, the formal government of Afghanistan? I think it's premature to engage in uh, in that discussion. I know that the UN Security Council is meeting tomorrow uh, or Monday uh, US time uh, to uh, to address uh, some of these issues of concern. I know uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has uh, has also called for uh, these uh, international discussions to be held, and I don't want to speculate on that, but. It is uh, a focus for us right now uh, in trying to support Australians, uh, Australian permanent representatives and their families in Afghanistan and those uh, locally engaged mm. staff that we have been bringing to Australia in recent months uh, and their families as well. Now, you've, uh, you've copped some flack, the federal government, that is, from the former Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd. He says it's unbelievable, potentially lethal negligence on the part of the Morrison government towards... Afghans who've stood with Australia over a decade. He says, I've been pleading with the government to bring them to Australia for months. What, what do you say in response to that? What is the government doing for those that have stood by our troops? Since uh, April of this year, uh, in fact, we have granted visas to over 640 uh, of the uh, locally engaged staff and their families uh, and brought more than 400 here uh, in those uh, months since April. Uh, that, in that increases to a total of 1,800 of uh, locally engaged staff who have, with their families, been able to come to Australia through this continuous program uh, that we have had in place. In fact, we have, I think, more than eight. 8,500 Afghanis here on humanitarian and protection visas, including that 1,800-person uh, cohort. Uh, we are very, very focused on working with the international community, particularly with the United States, who are assisting uh, principally with security leads in relation to uh, the... Uh, Hamid Karzai International Airport in Kabul to ensure that we are able uh, to support those Australians uh, 
permanent residents and visa holders mm. uh, and those who have applied who, are, who want to be able to come to Australia to leave in a safe and orderly way. The challenge, of course is making sure that that is the circumstance that applies in mm. Kabul. And so that is the expectation the United States have made very clear to the Taliban, uh, have made very clear uh, that will be a, a condition precedent to enabling both military and commercial flights to leave Afghanistan uh, with those sorts of, uh, of people on them. You've mentioned more than 400 uh, visa holders have returned since May. How many remain in Afghanistan? Have you got a sense, a number of how many Australian citizens and also those who have a right to, to come to Australia, having helped us either as translators or in any other capacity? Uh, Kieran, we're working with a number of people, but you would appreciate that these are very sensitive issues uh, and very sensitive for uh, for individuals. Uh, certainly across the parliament, uh, um, my colleagues and uh, and colleagues right across uh, the Australian parliament have uh, have been raising uh, particular issues with them that may affect people they know, their electorates, uh, and uh, we are working with all of those people. The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade has been engaged uh, right across. Uh, this last weekend uh, in particular on ensuring that we are able to support those Australians, those permanent representatives and visa holders. But in terms of the of the detail, I don't want to go into that detail publicly so I can ensure that we help them as in as safe as possible a way. What's to stop Afghanistan returning to become a, a safe haven for terrorists like al-Qaeda, yeah. uh, like they did a number of decades ago, and that was the whole point of getting in there in the first place. And what's to stop that happening again? I think that the international community uh, from uh, countries like Australia and the many others uh, that I have sat around uh, the uh, the international tables where the issues of terrorism and counter-terrorism ha are discussed, the international community has come a long way uh, in the way in which uh, we are engaged and working together on these issues. Uh, not one responsible nation sitting around those tables has any intention of allowing those sorts of safe havens to come together ever again. That takes a lot of effort in terms of intelligence, in terms of coordination and cooperation. And we know here in our own region how absolutely vital it is to address those issues. We have seen them too often. We have seen them in Indonesia. Uh, we've seen them uh, in uh, in the Philippines. Uh, we know what happened in Marawi, for example. Uh, and they have all been related to uh, the influence of uh, extremists in the Middle East. And we deal with this on a daily basis. It is an absolute focus for us as a nation. It's an absolute focus for this government and for the international community. Comparisons have been drawn between the fall of Kabul with the fall of Saigon in the mid-1970s. How damaging is this to American standing internationally? Kieran, I think it's invidious to, to draw those sorts of comparisons. Every single situation uh, is different and I actually don't think it's about any one country's standing at this point in time. This is about the people of Afghanistan. Uh, this is about Afghanistan itself and its future. Uh, it is about uh, Australia, the United States, the UK, uh, supporting uh, their nationals uh, in Afghanistan who wish to be able to leave and their families. Uh, there is a lot of work to do and that is our absolute focus. And, and final question, I'll ask you a question that's been asked of the Prime Minister, I think leaders around the world, was it all a waste? 20 years on, we see the, the Taliban back in power. Kieran, the, the subjects that you, that you and I have discussed in the, in the last few moments, the uh, position of women and girls, the protection of Afghanistan, the international community from the horrors of extremists and terrorism, uh, all those... Uh, all that work that has uh, has been put into those uh, very, very important areas um, is, in, in my view, not wasted. And the contribution of so many Australians who, uh, who fought, who engaged, who supported uh, Afghanistan at a time of its greatest need uh, has helped uh, every step of the way. Most importantly, as the Prime Minister has said, from Australia's perspective, we've always stepped up in the fight for freedom. We've always stepped up on the values that make us who we are. 
Uh, and I want to acknowledge every one of those uh, 39,000 Australians, the men and the women who have been part of this over so many years. Foreign Minister Maurice Payne, I appreciate your time. and a historic day, a difficult day for Afghanistan, but I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you, Kieran.